Uh, and he feels that the appropriate uh, tool is category theory. And of course, we've got one or two people here who know a little bit about a lot more than I know about category theory. So I'm sort of coming in at this as, as my, my main contribution, or my main thinking, as a contribution, is dealing with algebras. But just recently, I've seen how these algebras can be incorporated in the category theory, thanks to people like Freddie and Bob Cook, and maybe, maybe Hank uh, as well. But this, this comes straight from uh, John Bias's paper that space and state are, are being, and space, time, and process are becoming. So he's, they're, they're moving, George, towards what they've started telling me about in 1962. Because you should know, I didn't work on the causal interpretation, so Paul, for 10 years, when I was working with Dave. And I mean, people are totally amazed at that. But we were talking about this. Sorry, I still haven't mastered it yet. And what we had was a, was a concept of the, what we call the hollow movement. In other words, we take process as basic. And David used to go around saying, movement is what is, movement is what is. And I used to think, what the hell is he talking about? <laughs> But the idea is that was the most basic thing that you could have, uh, that you have activity. And from this activity, all objects, events, entities, structures, etc., uh, can be abstracted from this underlying process. Uh, in fact, all is abstraction from this total. But of course, the problem is, how do we actually put this into mathematical form? That's the... Well, I'm still doing it wrong. So even space-time itself, is a, 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 an abstraction here. And then the question, this is what I think uh, Lee Smollin, Andres was telling me that Lee Smollin used to think that was now changed his mind. In the... Yes, he was an advocate of saying we must start from a theory which does not assume a background yeah. about independence. And it seems very sensible for what the theory of the gravity. What he's doing now, uh, the students are doing now, he said he's just his role was putting this together basically. Uh, uh, they do again assume a uh, topological three manifold from the start. So they so they've got it there already. Yes, yeah, it is there already. Well, I mean, I, I sympathize because it's very difficult to start without yes, some so kind of background. They, they never really got back from the spin networks to manifold, which yeah, yeah, should yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, not, I'm not sure I've got it, but I'm, I'm just exploring some ideas here which may be useful. And the, 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 to put this into mathematics form, the question is whether it's going to be an algebra or are we going to use category theory? Now, as I say, my... Oh, and there's a couple of... Uh, uh, this is Bohm's wholeness and implicate order, sort of summarising the ideas. And, and also to suddenly find that um, Lou Kaufman has got very similar ideas, and in fact I was staggered when I picked up his book on physics and knots, where a lot of the ideas that we were using were implicit in what he was doing as well. And, and I nearly got divorced over that book. I don't know that I've told you that story. But I found it on... You don't mind me telling stories, do you, George? Of course not. How could I grant you? <laughs> no, I, 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 I saw the book on, on um, Bose bookcase when we were writing our book together and, and I picked it up and looked at it and saw things which I see model and so on, which is what I was brought up on. And I said, can I borrow this, George? Ah, uh, Dave, sorry, I'm talking. <laughs> he said, yes, and I took it on holiday with me. And it was a miserable holiday in the sense that the weather was typically English misty southern weather. And I kept reading that I couldn't put this damn book down. <laughs> My wife got fed up with it in the end. But it, it was incredible that I found someone like Sol who was actually trying to use mathematics to, to capture some of the ideas that we were playing around with. And I was still with it well. Okay, so let me just say quickly where, where I got the algebra idea from. It really came from the work of Hamilton, Grassman, and Clifford way, way back. Uh, where Hamilton um, was discussing the metaphysics of mathematics. And uh, he had a, uh, I think this was the title of his seminar, Metaphysics of Mathematica, as Mathematics, Algebra of Pure Time. And then there was this sentence, in algebra, relations are between successive states of some changing thing, or thought. And it was this use of the word thought that I found somehow uncomfortable and yet at the same time 
very stimulating. But this was another way of thinking. And then I read Grassman. Uh, actually, it was an English translation of Grassman from my German friends. <laughs> I couldn't read German sufficiently well. That mathematics is about thought, not about material reality. It's about the relationship of form, not the relationship of content. And that mathematics is to do with ordering forms created in thought. And so you're now free, I was, I don't know about you, Carl, but I was then free of the thinking about particles and fields coming in space and time. Because suddenly it was, mathematics was going to, here was the gap to get away from the sort of realist physics interpretation into something like abstract structure process, where I could try the ideas out in a way which wasn't limiting. Oh, no, I'm still doing it backwards. Now, and the whole point here was, of course, thoughts are not located in space and time, and therefore, if you're going to do the, if you're going to follow Grassman and follow his, his algebra, you don't need space time to do it. You can do it through relationships and so on. So maybe that uh, mathematics is not about m uh, material things in space time, but about being and becoming. And so that's the way I wanted to, when David and I were, were looking at it. And then just a little bit of illustration. And I want to particularly show these diagrams because they tie up with Bob, who's going to talk about quantum, kindergarten and quantum mechanics, I hope, tomorrow. And the idea was that you can think of a, a, a matrix representation, which of course we use in quantum mechanics, such that the diagonal elements can be thought of uh, as, a, if you look at this as a process, as describing some sort of ensemble of processes, the diagonal elements <coughs> are essentially the beam, <coughs> whereas the off-diagonal elements are essentially the becoming. So you're collecting together being and becoming in an array. And so the algebra has this, this structure behind it. How do I learn how to do this? And how I have it. <coughs> so this matrix is for some operator? Or... Yeah, yeah, at the moment. I, I'm, I'm just being very indisciplined at the moment. I'm just trying to get across ideas. Okay, I hope it's going to... Gel. That's if George lets me talk longer. Like <laughs> but then, the, this, the, I was always fascinated by the idea of categories long before categories became, showed their head in physics because Gerard Couturier, who might know as well, introduced me to Bill Lovier's work. He came to me one day and he said, Look, I've got some money, I want to do a PhD. I said, Okay. Always a good sign, wasn't it, Malcolm, when someone had some money and wanted to do a PhD? Hey, hey. And, oh, Morris, you're just in time. Yes, from Brazil to see Brazil. Oh, okay. yeah, from Brazil to see Brazil. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Are you yeah. Charlene? Hi, Charlene. Hi, Charlene. Hi. Uh, we're having a talk. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see you later. Thank you, later. Yeah, yeah, sure.